Thank you very, very, very much. You know, have you been to a place, you know, typical Ghanaian MC, and they come along and they say, our next speaker does not need an introduction. He was born in 1963. He went to primary school. After they say he did some traction, they spent one hour introducing the person. Uh, <laughs> Why am I saying this? Because my next guest really needs no introduction. So put your hands together. Show some love for Nana. Abba Anna Mwa. Hey, hey, hey. Right. You got it, you yeah. got it, you got it, you got it. Where do I sit? Anywhere? Anywhere. Feel okay. free, man. Thank you. Feel free. You're the diva. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be here. I'm glad you're here. We're uh -huh. going to pause for a small commercial break. Okay. When we come back, let it all hang. Wait. Let it all hang. <laughs> Sing around, folks. Nana by the house. We'll be right back. If you reach for that remote, I will bite you. The KSM Show will be right back. It's good to have you here, man. I've been, I care, sure. You, well, I've been trying to have you here for years, man. I know, man. I know. The there's, first, a, there's a time for everything. I guess, I guess there is. Because <laughs> the first time, the first time I was trying to get you here was uh, when you were doing New Day. Yes. On TV3. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I couldn't get you here. I know. But I have you here now. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> you have me. <laughs> let, let, let me. Let me start off with a very, very silly introduction to, to our conversation okay um well i don't know whether it's silly but uh uh you know castler george Lutrot? i know of him he has, has he has you classified you and some some other women mm -hmm. i think it's it's called mephanisa or uh, what does that mean something like well you've you've decided that Charlie, this your this your lot you you never get married again you'll be single for life or something like that well did, i did, i i i don't want to descent into the same you know gutter with people who think they know others better than they themselves know mm. themselves you know i so i i really i heard i i i saw uh, things on my tl but i didn't give it my time of day okay. uh, i mean I, I don't really give prominence to those things i don't have time yeah for, for those things so so no, I don't have time. <laughs> I, I really don't have time. But I don't I mean, have time. I mean, this, yeah. this is, uh, I, I think that um, people, I, he's not the only one who thinks that every woman at a certain age must be married. Mm. Um, mm. I've seen a lot of people, I have family, uh, uh, people who tell me, oh, when are you getting married? They ask me those questions. Yeah. I have friends. I meet strangers for the first time. That's the first question they're really? asking me. Yeah. And I just say to myself that, why? Is it that women are judged? I mean, you, you feel, I feel fulfilled. I have a 17 year old son. He'll be 17 in September. Mm. I have a job. I love what I'm doing. I'm, I'm living my life. But people think that my life is only complete when I wear a ring mm. and live with mm. a man. Mm. I mean, that mm. is so archaic mm. and stupid. And I, I just, I, sometimes I run out of descriptions mm. for that, mm. that a woman is only... Where do you think that comes from, though? Because it, it's so ingrained, it's part of our fabric as, I, as I, Ghanaians I, I or something. I wonder why. I really wonder why that you are only, you are only ticked complete yeah. when you're married. Yeah. So the hard work, waking up at dawn, doing research, toiling, sweating... That doesn't count Counts. until you're married. That is why a lot of young people yeah. are getting married yeah. and the divorce rate is so high, so high. because yeah. there's societal pressure. Yeah. And until we get men especially uh, not to speak the way some men speak, mm. and women most importantly, mm. because sometimes mm. the pressure is from the women a lot, mm. uh, because they feel they're married, so everybody should be married. Mm. No, it doesn't work that mm. way. Then I should be saying that I'm on TV, so every woman should be on TV. TV yeah. that's not... Give it up, give it up, give it up. <laughs> yeah. I know. Sometimes I, I wonder how, how, how it feels. I, I guess I will never know, mm. you know. But the pressure, and like you said, you know, many women are settling now. Yes, a lot of them. They have to, you know, there's yeah. like a time limit. There's pressure. There's pressure on them to settle down. And I don't know whether the pressure is coming from the mothers, the aunties, 
the female friends because they are with a group yeah. of friends and five of them are married you're yeah. the sixth you're not married so you need to compromise you need to settle down with whichever man is available yeah. for you yeah. and they're being beaten up the number of calls i get from women i don't know they're being beaten up by their husbands they're being maltreated uh three weeks ago a lady who works at coco board called me she didn't know me from anywhere she called me and said that her husband um, slept with her maid servant. She mm. confronted her husband and she was beaten to pulp. She was beaten pop to pulp. She went to her family and they said, oh, you know, understand yeah. him, mm. forgive mm. him. Mm. And she's there and she's suffering. Mm. Is this what marriage is about? I, I really don't know. I think there's too much pressure. Marriage is not for any, everyone. I don't know where in the Bible where it's stated that every woman must be married or mm. every man must mm. be married. If mm. they find it, they should show it to me. Mm. And then maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will look at the proposals. Like <laughs> we, have, we must have a lot though, don't you? I, don't you have a lot? I, I, well, just like any woman. <laughs> <laughs> just like every woman, I guess. Uh, are, are, they, are they intimidated too? Do you find I think at some so. levels that... I think so. I think um, a lot of my... Uh, when I say a lot, it's as if I've dated thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of my ex-boyfriends were quite intimidated. Really? There were some who really couldn't be bothered. I mean, they yeah. urged me on. They encouraged me. Mm. I was lucky to find some like that. I also found some who just didn't want me to be on TV. I remember oh, really? uh, a man I came close to being very serious with, and he said that you need to quit this job because really? uh, yes, because you're getting calls from all sorts of men. We're going out, and everybody's looking at you. He just couldn't stand it, and he also couldn't stand the fact that I was handling a political program, mm, and mm. I had to be firm. I had to be assertive and keep men in check. He just didn't like that <laughs> part. He thought I was a control freak. <laughs> is that, is that your control freak? I am not actually. I am not. I mean, I cry easily. I cry easily. I, I, I mean, on TV, I'm a completely different person. Yeah, that's, that's a personal that TV. Is, yes, strong. Yeah, very strong. Yeah. But I, I'm very emotional mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. What makes you cry? Oh, if you touch my son. Touch your son? Yes. Really? Yes. I, I will cry. I. I, I, I know you are very, very. Well, it's your son, so you, you'll be attached. But there's some extra, because I remember one awards night, some musical yeah. thing that yeah. I was on, and then they, no, no, was it radio it and TV It was radio thing? and TV. Yeah. Yeah, and I brought my son. You brought your son, yeah. and you said something, though, that um, there was pressure to, to abort the, yes. the son, and you yes. didn't, yes. and you're so proud of him, yes. and he's still there with yes. you. Yes, yes. He's my all, my what, life. But there was pressure to... Yes, that was, I mean, I was a teenager. Mm. Uh, I mean, I was very, I was very young. Mm. I was out of secondary school. I had no life and I got pregnant. Um, so there was pressure on me. There was pressure on my parents. Wow. You know, my mom felt, you, you're a teenager. How can you be pregnant? And my mom is very religious. Uh, my dad, oh, he couldn't be bothered. You're pregnant, so what? So what? Yeah. <laughs> That's the story. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he didn't understand why my mom was so worked up about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. But my mom, I could understand her because she's yeah. very religious. She has friends who are very religious, mm. and your daughter is not married, mm. and she's a teen, and mm. you know they there was, judge you. They judge you. Yeah. So there was pressure on her, and I also couldn't handle it in the beginning. And I, I must tell you that I considered all sorts of things, but in the end, I, I decided to have the baby yeah. and i think it's the best thing that wow. has happened to me um that is why when people come to me and say that um you need to get married i just look at them and laugh and and mm. think that you mm. must be the most senseless person in, in the world <laughs> because you can get married to the yeah. best man in the world at some point it won't be the same but yeah. the love of your child mm. will forever be the same it will never ever change and so i i adore my son and and if anybody and sometimes he comes home i remember when he was about nine or ten he came home uh they were asked to write myself and he didn't know what to write for his father mm. so he came home in tears and i really cried wow. you know I, I wish he had a relationship with her, with his father mm. but that relationship has never been there mm. you know the father is around though i guess so you guess <laughs> <laughs> i guess i guess he's around, I guess he's around. <laughs> yeah yeah he is. Uh -huh. mm. So yes, my son is very attached to me. I, I adore him. He's a very independent young uh, boy, mm. uh, but I, I love him. He's everything I live for. Yeah. Wow.
<laughs> Put your hands together, man. Oh. <laughs> and, um, oh, I have to, before I forget, you have this great reading project that's going on? Raising what, Readers. What's it called? Raising Readers. Ra raising Readers. Yes. Tell me about it. Cause well, it's something that I've been passionate about. I love reading. I was introduced to books at a very tender age by my father. May mm. his soul rest in peace. And uh, for the longest time, my father kept telling me that, look, uh, you've become a household name. Uh, you try to do charities on your birthday, but that's not enough. Giving food stuff and clothes to people is not enough. You've got to do something that really imparts knowledge. Mm. You know? So mm. try and put a reading project together. And for five years, my father kept telling me to mm. do it. I never did it uh, till he passed away. Really? And then when, 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 when did he pass away? Uh, my father passed away two years ago. Two years ago? Yes, oh. two years ago. Okay. And I was distraught that I couldn't do it uh, for him and for myself. So last year, I tried to put all of this together, uh, but a lot of things took my attention as well. But this year, I managed to launch it. Mm. And so every Saturday, I go to communities. Like, for instance, last Saturday, I was in Bukum with my friends, and there were about 200 children wow. who turned up to read with us. Yeah. I, I, I so think the children come, and then you read to them? Yeah, we read with them. Oh, you read with them? With them. So you read a child. It's the same book, so there's a group of of about eight or ten mm -hmm. uh, with an ambassador or a volunteer mm -hmm. uh, so they read together one storybook so you read a paragraph a child reads another paragraph in the end you discuss the book you discuss the characters what the children are taking away the new words they come they mm. came across the meaning how they can use it and they're enjoying this? they are enjoying it I mean yeah. I've been so impressed because when I started people said oh for the communities you are targeting yeah you probably won't get the best out of them but that was the challenge for mm. me that mm. if everyone thinks that these communities are right of. That is where I want to go. So I'm targeting. So which communities are you targeting? Um, f for now, the first phase of the project is in the Greater Accra region. So I'm targeting very uh, deprived communities, mm -hmm. Kolegono, uh, Jamestown, mm. Bukom, mm. you know, those areas. And the children turn up to read. They, they are coming in their yeah. numbers. They are, uh, in the beginning, they are shy. Mm. But later, the ambassadors are also people who enjoy reading. I'm not just taking anybody at all. I'm taking people who love, who love to yeah. read. So, for yeah. instance, there is a Michael Otier J, uh, sports journalist. Yeah. He yeah. reads a lot. Wow. So, he's there with the children mm. and reading with the children. Mm. So, the children are very comfortable. They make mistakes and he says, it's okay. Because when I started, I also made mistakes. Mm. Even at this age, I still make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it's okay. So, I, I'm loving it. And the children the attention span is 100%. When we take a break and we have to dance Azunto and the likes, we dance the Azunto. <laughs> but right after dancing, we go back go into back our sessions reading. and it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I love it. So what was the long term? What do you want to achieve in the long term? In the long term, I want children, I want to inculcate the, the, the habit of re reading. You know, in the past, you could see people, where I school, the at Alsat Academy, reading was a competition. Mm. Uh, the number of re re books you could read in a week, you know, it was a competition. Now you don't see that. People are too busy on Instagram yeah, and Facebook yeah, yeah. and if they have to go to a website uh, to read, it's a gossip column. Yeah, and I don't think yeah, that that's, yeah. that's good. And children mm. who read grow up to be adults who think mm, uh, you know mm, so i mm. think that we should get the children in the long term and i'm doing this with um some organizations tigo and cowbell and zoom lion and of course eib and in the long term i want corporate bodies to adopt communities mm -hmm. and build libraries for them mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you hear ceos of institutions say that uh, the graduates coming these days are not good enough what have you done to ensure that the graduates that are coming in are good enough. Mm. It's like a, mm. a talk shop. All they do is pay yeah, lip service yeah, to the problem. Yeah. But they're not addressing the problem from the root. Mm. And that's what I want mm. to do. Mm. <laughs> and, 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 your Instagram, you use Instagram for yes. as a... Yes, as it's, a it's, a, it's, a, it's a class for me. Uh, because I cannot stand how people just confuse basic grammar. Uh, for instance, people don't know, some people don't know what they is, there is, and I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. I try to go into their minds, but I just can't settle down there. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to dedicate my Instagram page to English uh, uh, lessons. So wow. for instance, um, sometimes I, ca I come in with idioms because you speak to people, even though they're speaking good English, you realize it's not rich with you know idiomatic expressions because that makes the vocabulary very rich and people are not using it and i don't understand so i give them the basic ones and they give me examples and people are using they come to my dm uh, some for instance uh, two days ago somebody came to my dm and said oh, Nana, but what's the difference between supposed 
uh, supposed to. And I was shocked. But I just said, okay, so this is okay. a problem this gentleman okay. has. Okay. So it is basic. The basic things people just don't know. Um, it, it's, it's alarming. It's a problem for even university students who cannot tell the difference between their and they. Yeah. Uh, basic, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's. it's, yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're writing an exam, and sometimes I speak to the chief examiner, and he says that some of the children are failing not because they don't understand the question, but because they are writing shorthand. Mm. So whatever they are writing, they use in text messages to oh, their so children. Oh, so they use yeah. it in an exam? Yes, they do that in exam. And that is why they are failing. It's wow. not because they are not learning enough. They are learning. But because parents are not encouraging their children to stop using that shorthand. My son, for instance, will not dare write shorthand. It's an agreement we have. So till date, he doesn't write shorthand. He doesn't speak pidgin English. I told him that it is not what you wear. It is not how you look. It's how you sound mm. that creates mm. an impression on people. Mm. So mm. don't be writing you know, shorthands to me or to anybody. And I go through his text messages and he doesn't write short. Wow. We started at a very tender age and it's stuck with him. So he doesn't write a TTY. No! He doesn't do the Hello, Ellen. Hello, Ellen. No, no, you're a question of that. No, 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 no. Wow. So kids are actually writing this in the formal exam now? They are. Oh, really? They are. Wow. It is very bad. They write D-A-T for that. Yeah, yeah. D-R-S for this. And when the chief examiner showed me some of wow. the papers I was shocked wow. I was I wow. was shocked completely shocked and so I, I think the teachers should be doing it now but the teachers themselves yeah. are writing shorthand yeah. everyone is writing shorthand yeah. these days so yeah. we are just corrupting the children uh, you know for very very bad reasons wow. and it's very wow. it's very appalling really give it up man give it up <laughs> your passion your passion wow. you're now a very very powerful voice in the media Am I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Nanaba. Oh, well. Yeah. Thanks and be to God. <laughs> <laughs> you had this fiasco with TV3. Yes. And then, and then. Yeah. Was that, big, was that much to do about nothing or what, what did you Oh, have? I, I. You know, I, I told myself I was never going to talk about TV3. Yes. Um, TV3 was a fantastic place for me. I mean, I spent how many, over a decade at TV3. Uh, they gave me opportunities some media houses never gave me mm. in the beginning. And so I'm forever thankful to them. Okay. Uh, I love the people there. I enjoyed working with them. I still miss some of the people mm. in there. Do I miss the institution? No, absolutely not. I don't miss the institution, but I, I miss the people, the people because the, yeah. hardworking people, mm. they mm. have limited resources, but they are willing to break their backs uh, to ensure that the seven o'clock news has whatever it takes viewers are looking out for. Um, yes, I had a, a problem with them um, about two years ago. I think it was two years. Oh, time flies. Um, two years ago, I, I didn't think I'll get over it, uh, but I'm completely over it. Um, that issue about Manchester United and the pictures, it was really much ado about nothing. It was, yeah, um, yeah. It was a joke. Uh, I guess they don't understand how these things work. But I also understood them because mm -hmm. it was their biggest name. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. actually at the battle of jokes and so yeah. uh, and I, I i just thought that it is trolling trolling is part of social media yeah. I, yeah. I, there's no one on social media who trolls more than i do mm. i troll people a lot especially football fans yeah. so when that happens they felt that okay this is our time to get back at yeah. Anaba. Yeah. and it was a joke between me and them uh, you know and the same people and i we still have banter yeah. we banter mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. social media and uh, so I, I i think that it was um it was probably a good time for me to leave because before then, five years before then, I had been trying to leave, and every time uh, they would they would con me with money and other <laughs> opportunities, and I would stay. You know, yeah. for five years I had been trying to leave. Even um, eight months before the incident, I had tried Try to leave. To leave, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I was convinced to stay. So I think God has a way of doing mm -hmm. things. He just felt that maybe mm -hmm. this was it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was an opportunity for mm -hmm. me to move, and I I knew they were going to call me back. But I also, because of the love I had for TV3 and the emotions and the bond I had for TV3, I didn't want to wait for them to call me because mm. I know I would have been convinced to stay. Okay. So I just um, what took the a, a clean break? I, I needed a break. At which point did uh, GH1 also approach? Did they? Um, 
<laughs> Did they take it, advantage of the chaos and say yes, this is the time? Yes, to... there were a lot of media houses actually okay. that contacted me. So many of them, um, and I just, they were all very good opportunities. The money was good. Everything was good, uh, and I just said to myself, I, I'm the type that likes challenges. Mm. I don't want an already baked bread. Mm. I want one that is either half baked or not baked at all, then you can so that I can feel that I, I, I was part of, part of it. Uh, you know, so th there were opportunities. Um, multimedia approached me. I could have gone to multimedia, but I saw EIB as what I wanted. Mm. Um, they were not associated with news. GH1 had never done news. They were known for just entertainment, entertainment yeah. and elections were just around the corner. So I just said to myself, "Would you want to be part?" of the crowd or be part of the, the nobodies yeah. and turn things around and so i weighed options and of course the money there was better <laughs> <laughs> that, that helps yes that that helps. Helps. <laughs> it pays a bill. so i took that and of course our uh, bola ray is somebody i adore i respect he understands me when this issue with tv3 happened he was one of the first people who called me and said nanaba I saw what happened on social media. I knew what exactly it was about. If they don't understand it, calm down, don't talk. Because at the time, I wanted to come out and talk. Mm. But Bola said to me that don't talk to mm. anybody. Just mm. let it blow over. Mm. And I allowed mm. it to blow mm. over. So when Bola approached, and I just thought, okay, Bola is somebody I consider a brother, a very good friend. So I, I, I jumped with him. All right. <laughs> Give it up for Bola. <laughs> Bola the picture. Great guy. <laughs> Great guy he is. Yeah. Really. Great yeah. guy. Yeah. But you're doing, you're doing very, very well. Thank you. know. You. Doing very, very well because you went through that storm. rather storm, yes. you know, yeah. quite uncalled for, but, you know, but you, oh, you, yeah. you kept steady. I'm and, a uh, fighter. Yeah, you're a fighter. Yes. And, and I still... also wanted people to know that uh, sometimes you could be caught up in a storm, Yeah. but you need to paddle the boat harder, yeah paddle harder yeah. you will you will get out of that storm and fantastic. when you do um a lot more people will admire you fantastic yeah. fantastic <laughs> very last question mm -hmm. so is, is there is there i know you don't know you know but is, is there a fellow <laughs> a fellow. Is, is there a fellow? A man oh, in the system? Oh. Is there a man? <laughs> yeah, of course. Somebody. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, there is somebody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's very private. He's very private, yeah? Yes. Oh. He wouldn't want to be discussed. <laughs> if I discuss him, he'll break up with me. Really? Yes. Okay, we won't discuss him. I yeah. wouldn't want to be the <laughs> cause of that. Yeah. But one day, I want to have you and him here. Mm. Mm. One day, you never know. Yeah. Mm. I see. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> 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 no, that was so much Thank fun. You. Yes, and Thank uh, you. It's great having you finally. And know, it's been exciting. I, know. I love your show, by the way. You do. Thank yes, you so I think much. You're the king. Thank you. Did you hear her? <laughs> <laughs> you are the king. Not that I think. You are the king. Honestly. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it's a pleasure having you. Pleasure and, uh, having you're doing you. so well. Thank Keep you. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Thank I you. I want to say you're a man, but I guess I can't. You're a woman? Oh, let's just say I'm the person. You're the person, man. <laughs> You're, the person. You're the person. You're the person. You're the person. You're the person. Thank you so much. See you around, folks. We'll be right back. If you're having as much fun as I am, stay tuned. If you're not, you need deliverance. We'll be right back.